This might be a legitimate back against the wall moment for an Israel Adesanya who's trying to not follow in the footsteps of a Kamaru Usman and lose his belt and then rematch just to lose again. And sometimes that's the reality of the game. Now, you have to be completely real about this situation right here. Alex Paeda, very quickly, in the span of just over a year, has become a mythical fighter in the UFC. The power, the... Uh, stoicism right his inability to speak english even makes him just scarier but at the end of the day man israel adesanya has been a bad bad man for a long time and felt very untouchable for a long long time so my question to you is israel adesanya can outpoint alex paeda for 24 minutes and 55 seconds but if he's not on point for those last five seconds it's over we already saw it in the last one why are you confident that israel adesanya can change course in the uh in the rematch I think it's going to be that one thing that he let slip in the uh, interview, Derek, that put in Potan on his back. But I th don't think it's going to come when everybody thinks it is. You know, I, I, everybody's thinking it's going to be a first round shoot, second round shirt. We're going to see wrestling from the jump. I don't think so. I think he's going to lull Pereira into that same style of fight that they've had, man. They've When you stand across the cage from somebody and then you have to do it again, nonetheless, four times total, now going to be the fifth, man, you have that same kind of feeling. So you can get lulled into that normal style of battle that you two have been going back and forth at. And then out of nowhere, there's a comes that X factor where you shoot mm -hmm. for the legs. He's what? Oh, my God. Fourth round, fifth round. Now I'm on my back. Now I have to worry about the stuff we've been practicing. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm working. I think that factor right there is what Izzy has up his sleeve now. I mean, we caught it. I, I wonder if Potan's team caught it. I'm sure they're ready for that. I mean, you're, you're practicing with Glover Teixeira. You know you're going to be ready for the takedown, for the ground game over there. So I, I caught a word you said earlier, confident. I don't know how confident I am, Derek. This is this is a bit of a gamble. And I mean, you could see Izzy is the favorite. So he does have the crowd push going for him. I'm not so confident in this fight, man. I, I do believe sometimes somebody's got your number. But when they do have your number, you need to pull out that X factor. I think that X factor is a takedown. Do you think he can get it in the fifth round when he's tired, when everything's going on? Or does it need to be a wrestling show from the jump? Well, I have to hit on a couple of points. First off, uh, this is going to be the fourth uh, match in a row, right? This is 3-0 uh, for yep. Alex Paeda. But that aside, I thought the wrestling, it came out in the last fight. It's not like it wasn't there, right? Israel Adesanya never particularly went for aggressive shots. Rather... Poetan came in, tried to shoot a little bit, tried to work in some of that grappling, and Adesanya was able to get a reversal, was able to get on top, but then what does Pereira do? Given the fact that, let's be honest, bro, in cage, this dude's a light heavyweight, you know what I'm saying? This is not a 185-er that he's fighting against. That's what worries me when it comes to grappling exchanges. You can be the more technical guy. Sometimes the guy that has more power, who is physically a larger individual than you, will be able to sweep you, will be able to reverse position and just muscle out of it, especially sweaty, no-gi, UFC style. It, it's tough, right? So the X factor, in my opinion, Glover Teixeira. You don't think Alex Paeda is sitting here just training, like jujitsu training, grappling? You don't think that, like, they don't they don't think that Israel Adesanya is like that's the game plan? He knows at this point there's real confidence with Alex Paeda. That's what makes him even scarier for me, man. You know, if you dig deep and you push forward, you have the chin to take his shots, and he doesn't have the chin really to withstand your shots. So talk to me about that, man. I think more than physical. I think this matchup right here, the rematch in MMA, this is mental. I think this is literally all a mental chess game. So mentally, do you think that that, like Israel Adesanya has to be coming from a place where he's not at an advantage mentally, correct? Uh, yes and no. So I think this I think this mental warfare goes a little bit of both ways because is Pereira more in the driver's seat of how he can control the war, the mentality of Izzy? Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. That that kind of goes back and forth with the, you know, having his number and all that stuff. But I, where I think the mental battle that uh, Pereira has to face right now is he's been cutting weight for two weeks, man. You said it yourself. He's a light heavyweight in the cage, but he's more of a heavyweight outside of the cage. I was watching, I think it was Uncle Chael talking about it. Pereira walks around 220, 222, something around there. Massive individual. And he's, like I said, he's having to cut weight for two weeks now. So all that training we're talking about, all that game plan and all the work with Glover, all that stuff that they are so stressed about kind of sort of takes a back seat to the first fight you have to have, which is with the scale. So I don't know how crisp, how, how sharp all that'll be if you're worried so much about making that first initial weight. Now we'll see later on, you know, we filmed this one before the weigh-in, so we'll see how he's looking at the weigh-ins. I'm sure he's gonna be crisp. I'm sure Potan's gonna be, you know, clean looking, sharp, everything. So I think, I think it goes back and forth a little bit. Now would I weigh the a mentality battle 
for uh, Pereira, yeah. But I still think there's a little bit to go in there, you know. Mm -hmm. And now with a lot of the stress off of Izzy, he can just perform. That yeah. does go into it. Uh, one, the, uh, another knock, though, for Izzy, and I want you to touch on this too, Derek. Is this too soon to come back after the actual knockout? Because was it a clean, your, your face hits the mat, you're sleeping? No. But you were out, man. You were dizzy. You were knocked. Even your coach, Eugene Berriman, says a little bit too soon of a comeback. I mean, it's it, it seems like it to me. I don't know. What do you think, Derek? I think, yes, too soon. And the reason why is because, yeah, you didn't get brutally knocked out the way Kamar Usman did. And he probably returned a little bit too quick. But what do we always say, man? Because it feels like their their last fight in MMA was just a couple weeks back. This was like five months ago, right? But realistically, in five months, how drastically can you change your game that you've molded over years and years and years of martial arts training? You, you can't really change much. You're not going to turn into a D1 wrestler in five months. I'm sorry. It doesn't, you got no wrestling shoes in the cage. You know what I'm saying? You might be able to like tweak a couple techniques and all that, but the reality is you're not going to ingrain that muscle memory in five months. So I do think that at, its, at, at the end of the day, we're going to see two of the greatest kickboxers the earth has ever seen go at it for 25 minutes. And the question is, does Paeda knock him out? Does Adesanya knock Paeda out? Because he has that option too. He just doesn't have the nuke, but he has that precision. Or do we see a timid, on-your-bike fight between these types of fighters, man? I know Paeda probably won't be the guy running, but Israel Adesanya, he can move and make it difficult for you to land those shots. The only question is over 25 minutes. I want Real quick, AJ, because this is important before we move on. There's two things that I think we haven't addressed yet. Pereira's... Uh, Calf kicks, leg kicks against Adesanya. Adesanya admitted he was damaged by the calf kicks. I think it's simply due to the size and power of prayer, honestly, right? Mm -hmm. Calf kicks. How much is that going to play a factor in this one? Oh, calf kicks, huge, man. Especially after the fight, somebody announces, oh, man, I was in danger. Those hurt. You know. <laughs> I'm spamming those left and right mm -hmm. all day long. Now that does go both ways because Izzy mm -hmm. could have said that as a trap. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I mean if, you ever, if you've ever taken a calf kick, you know how bad those hurt. And then the next question is, if Israel Adesanya decides, I'm going to go D1 wrestler mode here on Pereira, as a lifelong kickboxer, as he is, championship, fantastic, legendary kickboxer, your cardio is not quite built for wrestling, right? And they say that could have been part of the problem in the last fight, is that he had to do a little more grappling than anticipated, and then round four and five, when you need to be on your bike, didn't have the energy to do so. So when you have to be on your bike for 25 minutes, would it even be ad advantageous to try to wrestle? In, in pursuits of trying to tire out Paeta, you're probably tiring yourself out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I agree with him. That's why I think the the takedowns are going to start coming rounds four and rounds five for the is, uh, Izzy camp. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you shoot too early, you run into that problem, man. Mm -hmm. You're dumping too much gas in the beginning of the fight. I think that did come into play. So that's why I was saying, man, a fourth round, a fifth round shot out of Izzy will surprise people. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, we'll see if it actually happens. Though. So I think it's easy to say this. I personally, and this is me stepping out on a limb, I think Israel Adesanya is the better fighter. I just think Alex Paeda has the nuclear option that, just like Francis Ngannou against Stipe, when I pick Stipe in the rematch and Ngannou just starched him, it's just like you can't mess up. And it's easy to mess up against these guys. So let's put the picks in, man. Clearly, Adesanya is a betting favorite for a reason. You have to respect the, the resume. Uh, Pereira is not nearly as tested, but against Adesanya, he's as tested as they come, man. So give me the plus 165 TKO prop. To me, it's almost crazy that it's plus 165 at this point. I find it hard to see him winning a decision at plus 170 right there. So give me that all day. How do you see it, brother? This, this is a hard one, Derek. I've been waiting to see the odds. I didn't look at the odds on the props for this fight because I feel like it can either Izzy, early round, knockout, almost like we saw in the last fight, mm -hmm. or he's on the bike, gets that decision. I'm going with the decision. I think it's a little more likely that we see the timid Izzy. Not not timid of sorts. It's a bad word to use, but it weren't calculated. I'm going with the decision, Israel Adesanya. All right, and there you have it, folks. This is for your middleweight championship, and, and Israel Adesanya is almost like the last hope of, like, can these guys get their belt back after losing it? We'll see. After this one, we're going to see Valentina, but you, you know what I mean. All right.